Thanks for, thanks for coming here today, guys. Um, it's great to be here. You know, I, I was actually a speaker here about four years ago, back in 2009, and wow, it's just amazing to see like the longevity of this group, and that you know, I see, see a couple familiar faces here. Um, you know, so let, let, let's have a hand for our organizers today here. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, uh, I, for the presentation today, uh, keyword research is, is, a, is a tricky topic. Uh, you know, it's like some of you guys are beginners, some of, some of you guys are kind of intermediate, senior. It's, it's, a, it's a tough topic to, to, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to put together something here that has something for everyone here. Uh, and, and um, you know, basically, uh, uh, the, the, the outline here for the talk is uh, basically, I wanted to talk first about something called the keyword grouping and organization. So these are really key concepts. Uh, so, so we'll start with some slides and just talking about the theory behind some, some keyword research. Um, and then I, I thought we could just go uh, straight into the uh, a, a demo. Uh, I wanted to demo some uh, new, new technologies from Google, the, the Google Keyword Plan Planner, and also uh, how to how to use uh, like how we use Google Analytics now that the um, now that the the keyword data is all gone. Uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, that was a great introduction. Uh, the, the whole, uh, the one thing I would just add is um, this this company. So I started it like five years ago. I'm like a sole founder kind of scenario, and and uh, it's today we're like you know 70 or 80 people, or like a, you know 1,200 customers, uh, you know over like 10 million a business kind of thing, and. Uh, a lot of the, the, the growth of this company was actually through just keyword research and um, and SEO. So like we, we sign up like hundreds of customers every month, largely from just doing organic search engine optimization. So this stuff is really powerful. And uh, in, in the presentation today, uh, like it's certainly been really uh, very key to growing the business, uh, my business. And, and I was going to share with you some some of the strategies that we've employed or, or, or currently employing uh, uh, to, uh, at, at the company here. Um, so, uh, you know, how just how important is keyword research in terms of your your business strategy? Well, this is uh, this is my blog. This is the WordStream blog. we you know I started it around uh, January 2009. That was just around the time when uh, when Dave asked me to speak at, at Boston SEO like the first time around. So that's definitely a key success here. Trying to get a speaking slot here. Uh, but, but but the other the other key success I think it, it's it's largely just um, like we're growing the blog. It's it's ridiculous. It's like. 9% growth in, in, in organic traffic per month compounded, you know, consistently over a period of like 60 months. Uh, so this is uh, this is a uh, kind of what what's possible with even just like one blogging person and, and, and a little bit of uh, insights in terms of uh, you know, the keyword research. So so we'll we'll talk about the specifics and, and how to do that. Um, so. My take on keyword research is it's it's just a, it's a game, okay? Like this whole thing about keyword research, it's like a, one of those video games. With what's the, po the point of this game? I'm I'm just trying to think of every possible, you know, every possible keyword that someone might search on who might be interested in my product, uh, like every possible product, uh, you know, acronym and, and any 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 question people might be asking or struggling with right, right before buying, like like needing a. a, a the, the, the company in WordStream sells a PPC management software. So even though we do a lot of SEO stuff, like we're selling a, like AdWords management software, basically. But basically, the whole point is to um, think of all all of those possible keywords, and then really dominate uh, your niche and, and and have content that's kind of themed, like one piece of content for every every theme that you identify, and, and you just kick ass. You can just generate content for every possible, you know. Theme that you identify, and, and, and then this is a really uh, powerful strategy. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about this keyword research game. Uh, so, like I said, it's you know all I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out specifically how are people searching for you know, your products and services. You know, be specific, be relevant, you know, and, and exhaustive. Like we, I have a target keyword list of tens of thousands of keywords at this point. It didn't it didn't start off as tens of thousands? It started out as like five. But you know, as you, you just you Keep building on it over, and, and, and it, it grows. Um, the number two uh, kind of plan here is, it's not possible to create, you know, ten <coughs> pieces of content, one for every keywords. But you don't have to. 
the, the, most of the keywords are very similar, like uh, if you look at the, the keyword searches, maybe the word order is different or it has a, a different modifiers or adjectives. Uh, you can group together and, and mix and match the keywords with similar search intent uh, so that you can break down that big list of initial keywords into smaller niches. And we'll talk about this in, in just a second. Um, a third component of this is uh, you'll have so many different keyword niches uh, that you've identified, but there's maybe only one or two of you at the company doing this kind of blogging and content creation effort, and so you're going to have to prioritize. And I'll show you later today how I prioritize to write about X rather than Y. Uh, and then the last kind of key to the success here is to take action. And so it's not just about doing the keyword research, but also turning that keyword research plan that we're going to generate together uh, into a plan of action, or, or, or like a blogging plan, like a calendar or something like this, where we knock out you know, one or two or three posts per, per week. So let's talk about this uh, in detail. Um, so here's the, here's the steps in, in, in more detail. Uh, step one was uh, just, uh, you know, how the heck are people searching for your stuff? Uh, and this is just like the kind of the brainstorming phase where you where you pull in all the data from all the different sources. Uh, one of my favorite sources, if, if you happen to be working for a client or if your company is or is doing um, PPC advertising, you know one of the best kind of untapped gold mines is the PPC search query report. Uh, so that's where in AdWords you can see exactly what keywords people uh, clicked on or searched on right before clicking in your ad. Uh, they used to be able to do this in, in, in SEO, but this has is, is, been taken away, but it's still available in, in paid search, and that's very interesting. Um, you know, the, of course, there's a, other keyword suggestion tools, the ad, the ad planner, uh, and, and, and I'll be showing you that uh, a demo of that today if, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, but, but just the, the point here is just kind of aggregating together all the different sources of, of, of keyword data. So once you've... Um, once you've uh, kind of made this big soup of, of, of maybe a thousand or ten thousand keywords, uh, you then need to do this kind of uh, culling, kind of this uh, breaking it up from a big list of keywords into into a smaller number of of niches, like more specific lists. And um, you know, of course, it's it's very hard to act on a huge list of keywords. We're going to just match them up. We're going to match up similar keywords with similar intent. It, it, even if they're searching slightly differently, if the, int the intent of the keyword search is if they're looking for more or less the same thing, you can match them up together and, and, and count them as one. Uh, let's, let's look at a, a detailed example of this uh, because I think it's a very important concept. Um, so this is a, a keyword niches. Uh, and just, has everyone heard of this, by the way? Just uh, show of hands, please, just so I can get a sense for where our audience is. So uh, the, the, um, consider this, in this example, uh, Different ways that people search for the, the term Xbox 360. So this is um this is a, a free tool from WordStream. You can go get it from wordstream.com/keywords. But basically, there's 130,000 different ways of searching for Xbox 360. So it's it's not possible like uh, you know Xbox you know, controllers and games and hard drives. There's 130 different 30,000 different ways of searching for for this kind of similar concept. And so. There's just too many keywords here, so you're going to have to, to triage and, and, and organize them together. So let, let, let's see how you would do that. Uh, uh, basically, um, you know, here, here's, the, here's the example. I'm starting with the, uh, the keyword list. It's kind of a, a condensed list on the left. Uh, maybe initially um, we're going to do some filtering. You know, not every keyword on that list is going to be relevant to your business. So like Xbox 360 cheats, maybe you eliminate that from the consideration because it has nothing to do with your business. We're, we're just trying to bucket together similar keywords. Notice how like, you know, three of these on the list have something to do with consoles. Uh, you know, uh, four on the list have something to do with games. Uh, you know, so they're, they're different facets of, of, of Xbox 360s. And what we're trying to do is just rather than having one, one big list on the left, we're, we're breaking it down into smaller, uh, more manageable sublists that are, are a little bit more specific and themed. Um, so, um, what makes a good keyword niche? Uh, ideally, it should be something that's highly re relevant to what it is you're, you're selling, uh, the product or service. So, something um, something uh, that's both relevant uh, and small enough and specific enough uh, that um, if you try to break it, breaking it up even further into smaller niches, um, you know, when, when do you stop breaking these lists up? I would say that when, when the intent of the search of, of all the keywords are all the same, 
then you're good. You're like, you don't have to, to keep breaking them up. If, if you have a niche where, as you read the, the keywords in that list, and you think that, oh, this guy could be looking for something very different from what this other keyword, kind of uh, the intent behind this other keyword, then you should continue to do the segmentation and, and, and sub subdividing of that list. Uh, and so that's, um, that's kind of the advice there. And, um, and, and the, the whole point why these niches matter so much, it's, it has to do with my game, like my keyword research game, which was to dominate. Like I wanted to make it like so that if anyone was searching for anything related to pay-per-click marketing, that they would find content from wordstream.com. Uh, like, I mean, it, it's, it, it's sick. Like, we get you know something like half a million s searches from organic every month, uh, and, and, and it's using this, this, this uh, strategy of identifying all the different categories and, and grouping them together and, and um, creating, this is called creating a taxonomy. A taxonomy is kind of like the mapping of the keywords within your industry niche. Uh, and, and, um, Taxonomy is a very important concept because um, uh, what, what, once you identify the, all the different niches in, 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 your, in your space, then the, 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 the last step in this process, remember there was a three-step process, it was to act on that taxonomy. So specifically, now that we've you know, identified you know, the niches and the, and the taxonomy, you then just, it's just a simple recipe. You just author content, one page uh, that's themed for every uh, niche that you, you've identified. And one uh, website that does this really well is Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia has, if you notice, uh, every article on Wikipedia is very specific and very themed. And uh, they always show up on search results no matter what. If you search for anything uh, informational in nature, there'll always be a page uh, from Wikipedia. And so, um, you know, the whole point is that you've, you've created these themed uh, kind of keyword groupings and then you can create content uh, and, and, uh, and a map of that content to the keywords. But also, look how you're using kind of the variations within, within the content. So like, within a themed article on venture capital, you can include synonyms and related terms and, and, and kind of longer, like various different ways of saying the same thing. So like venture capitalist, uh, ventures, VC fund. That these are all kind of within that same keyword niche. And by kind of augmenting the, the article with the, with the variations, uh, you're casting a wider net. So this content will be able to rank on a lot more than just the primary keyword, but also kind of uh, variations of, of the theme. And so that's how you're able to, you know, even though there could be tens of thousands of uh, you know, different search queries in, in your industry, that you, you, you capture the lion's share of them with even just like a few hundred pieces of content. Uh, so, uh, I know this. Uh, most of you, it's from the from the introductions. It seemed like uh, most of you were interested in in <coughs> optimization. Not surprised. This is the SEO meetup. But um, the, the concepts of keyword niches. I just wanted to, as a, an aside here, they're equally important in pay per click marketing. So like in, in AdWords uh, uh, marketing. So in AdWords, um, there's this metric called quality score, and quality score is Google's grade of the relevancy of your keywords and ads. And it's, it's a score from one to 10. 10 being like, this is a really great ad, uh, and one being, this is a really horrible ad. And so the 10, you know, like how do they give, how do you get a 10? It has to do with mostly mostly your click-through rate. So like if, if people are actually clicking on your ad, you're, you're more likely to get a higher grade from Google uh, in terms of your quality score. Uh, and and, and um, if no one's clicking on your ads, you're more likely to get a zero or a, a one. And so, um, you know, how do you get people to click on your ads? Well, it's it's the same notion of keyword grouping and keyword research. Uh, look at these um, kind of like three boxes on the bottom here: bad, okay, and better. So bad is where you have, you know, dog, cat, bird, snakes. I mean, they're all kind of pets, but someone looking for dog could be looking for something very different from guppies. And so, even though that you could write one kind of catch-all ad, you know, online pet superstore, you know, get everything you need for, from all your pet supplies. I mean, that's kind of a that's not really going to have the high click-through rate, uh, you know, because it's, it doesn't speak specifically to what the, the intent of the searcher. You can you can go to, to the middle box there, that, which has a more uh, faceted search, so save on a specific type of product, cat food, or you can even get more granular and group together, um, you know, canned cat food or Friskies cat food, like, like uh, specific types of cat foods, and and by by being more and more granular, you'll get higher click-through rates, higher quality scores, and and um, you'll pay less 
for those clicks as a result, you get a reward, you get more prominent positioning. But it, this is a, it's, the concept is analogous in paid search as it is in, in uh, organic search of, of uh, you know, identifying niches of, 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 uh, or groupings of keywords, grouping them together, them together and then acting on them. So um, at this point, I thought we could just, enough of the slides here, and just get, get into a demo uh, of, of using this new uh, keyword planner. Um, I'm just a lot of stuff has changed in the last uh, 30, 60 days. Just to show of hands, how many people are like have actually spent a lot of time using the, the, the new keyword planner here? So it's like oh, third or something. So um, so that's a. Uh, why don't we just um, do this here um, so people can see this? Let's just. Um, So uh, one key difference here is that you used to be able to use um, uh, this planner, keyword planner tool. Um, now you need an AdWords account. It's kind of um, uh, you just create an empty account, and, and uh, I think they're trying to make it harder to do SEO or something, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're trying to make it so that more people will use AdWords. Uh, but uh, so so um, uh, I, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about that because like I sell. PPC management software, but the way that we generate our leads is through or organic search. So I'm kind of like like a hedge there. Uh, so so um, let's start with a very simple example here. Um, so this is uh, uh, this is it's saying um, it's kind of cut off here, but it's saying what would you like to do? Um, enter one or more of the following. You know your product or service. So uh, I think someone said something about. Um, you know, office space, uh, you, you're, you're selling office space, uh, so, um, you know, uh, so we'll just type that in and, and see what comes up here. Um, and, and, and you can you can specify targeting options, we're going to get some ideas here. So this is a little different from the, the Google uh, keyword tool. Uh, what's specifically different about this is that it's thinking in terms of keyword niches. So, uh, all that stuff that I was talking about earlier about grouping and or organizing the keywords, um, it's rather than just providing a list of keywords uh, for you to look at, it's kind of grouped them. So there's a bunch, there's a, a grouping of 45 uh, keywords having to do with office leasing. And you see how they're, they're a little bit more themed together, like office space lease, lease office space. Remember how I was saying like, you don't have to have a piece of content for every single keyword, as long as you have like one ad and one piece of content for kind of each bucket of keywords that are kind of similar, uh, these, these, uh, these would all uh, kind of you know, speak to the same intent. Uh, so what's, what's kind of interesting about this, it's, it's definitely different from what, what, we're, what we're used to seeing, but I still think it nevertheless is quite powerful. Uh, it's, it's grouping together the keywords by, um, by uh, kind of the facets, like what kind of uh, office space, maybe like Houston office space, like this is not something that, that uh, a gentleman would be interested in, I think because he's a local business. But it, it, it's, it, it's definitely trying to group them together by, uh, well, here's one, Boston, uh, you know, in office space in Boston. Uh, so this would, be, this would be a good primary theme for, for an article, and then if you could sprinkle in some of the, the variations within the subheadings and, and, and image captions and, and et cetera, uh, that, would, that would be very helpful. Um, so again, uh, the, the idea here is just um, you're basically, um, it, it's, it's kind of a, it's all the, the groupings are now baked in uh, with, with the keyword planner. That to me is the, the biggest uh, one of the biggest changes uh, in terms of uh, doing keyword research. You, you really have to be thinking uh, keyword niches as opposed to uh, lists. Now you can still generate the list of of, um, of keywords that like it's, it's, you just tab over here and it'll give you the un unorganized list. But uh, but that's um, kind of the, one of the main things. There's a lot of interesting filters here. Like you can. Um, uh, you know, exclude things with a min with below a minimum threshold of, of, of keyword of, of keyword searches per month, or um, you can even control sort of how how uh, how broad like the, the different types of keywords that you'd be interested in showing. Like only show keywords that are closely related to my search. So there's a lot of uh, functionality. Like if you happen to be doing an AdWords campaign uh, here, you could even like you could even exclude keywords that you're already advertising on. Could exclude keywords uh, that are uh, negative keywords, like so sort of stuff that you've already identified as being not not relevant to your business. You could have that excluded. So there's a lot of uh, really neat 
kind of tie-ins with this prop, uh, with this tool, with uh, with your um, uh, sort of the, uh, the the AdWords account that you may have, like if, if you happen to have be advertising already, uh, there, there's some nice integrations there. Um, another um, really interesting workflow through the tool here uh, or, uh, is um, my favorite one is actually um, it's this other workflow. So where you um, so, so let's say modify search, uh, you can get a list of search volume uh, and uh, for, for a list of keywords. So a lot of times uh, if, you're, if you're signing up a new client, they might have a lot of historical data, like, like, like I was saying earlier, um, search query data from AdWords and, 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 and SEO campaigns in the past is a really great source of, of, of keyword data. And so let me just pull up my analytics account here. This is my wordstream.com analytics account. You can kind of see like this is in the last, um, I don't know, uh, the last 30 days or so. Like here, are, here are the top keywords for my account. Uh, you know, not provided is predominant, but um, <laughs> but, but the, the point is like like you, you you still have the historical data, so like you could go back uh, from before September, and and you could also grab your AdWords data if, if, if you're going to be using uh, search marketing. But what, what you can do is is um, just grab a list of, of keywords here. I've I, I just like a cooking show. I've Kind of exported the list just to speed things up a little bit. But basically, what you can do is you can you, you can just you know enter the list of keywords into this box here, and then get the search volume estimates. And what's really interesting about this is um, uh, you're gonna have to uh, modify search here. Um, <coughs> right. So what's happening here is now. It's analyzing my proprietary keyword referrer data and organizing that into sub niches. So, for example, uh, it, it's noticed uh, kind of a, a grouping of pay per click ads here, um, and, and, and there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of keywords here like ads pay per click, total cost pay per uh, click ads, etc. So, uh, rather than having to deal with like a list of you know, 5,000 unorganized keywords. One of the really cool features of this uh, tool is that it, it has kind of grouping capabilities, and, and uh, you, you can kind of kind of have the, the niches sort of reveal themselves rather than the man, manually, uh, you know, looking through 10,000 keywords and you'll go blind. Uh, this is a much better uh, way of, of, of approaching that problem. And so you can then uh, just identify the different niches and then create ads and content themed uh, across these different groupings. Uh, any any questions about this at all? Um, so. So overall, like I, I realize, like this uh, the keyword planner has been largely panned by SEOs uh, as being kind of like you know not nearly as good as the, the previous thing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that it's I don't think of it as it, it being better or worse. I think of it as being different. And the key difference is like you have to have the mentality of of, uh, of the groupings and, and, and thinking of, 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 of keywords. It's not in terms of one big list of these kind of. Uh, you know, just groupings of, of similar keywords with similar intent, uh, and if, if that's the way you're thinking about it, then this is actually more more helpful uh, than than what we had before. Uh, although there are a lot of bugs and things here that are horrible. Um, so <laughs> let's um, just um, go back to um, deck here. So I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, so we talked about. So so far we've introduced this concept of keyword grouping and and um, an organization. Oh, sorry, there's actually one other uh, key important point that I wanted to show. Uh, it has to do with prioritization. So, see, this list has like you know dozens of, of, of keyword of, of niches. Uh, so, there's only one of you, and you need to create content around these these themes. But how do you know which one to focus on? Uh, like, for example, it's doing some some of this um, aggregation, like uh, of stats. So, like, you know, it's saying like. All the 207 AdWords keywords within this niche you know, represent this many uh, searches or whatever, or, or you know these 24 PPC terms where they you know generate something like you know uh, uh, back here, um, yeah, 8,570. Like it, it's it's which one should you focus on? And so the way that I do it is I export this list. And so what you can do is you can just say. Um, uh, you just go here and you say, um, you know, download. You download them all. Like you add them to your plan, right? And then you can download the entire list. Uh, it's uh, 
uh, yeah, you can, you can just download the list, and I've kind of just cut the chase here. Um, here's what that would look like. Um, so um, you could definitely sort them by um, the, the, uh, sort by um, the average monthly um, searches, but I, I would argue that that's not, not necessarily the best way to, to go about doing this. Uh, so what I do is I, I, I do like a rank order, okay, so, and this is what's so cool about these niches, uh, you can, you know, just say something like, uh, uh, generally I, I like to, to look at the, not the volume of search, so how many, the estimated monthly search volume, I multiply that by the, uh, the average cost per click bid, because that gives me an indication of the commercial value of the keyword, so like if the, the, the bid is like $10, then chances are that's a pretty much more valuable commercial term because people are willing to pay that much for it uh, relative to like say someone only willing to bid 50 cents on, on, on some term. So this is the price times the quantity uh, and then I divide by the, the, the competition. So this is a PPC competition metric. All this is coming out of the, the, the keyword planner. Um, but uh, the point is that who cares if it's like a um, you know, lots of volume and lots of value if you have no chance in hell of ever ranking on this thing. So there has to be some way of normalizing my competition. So what I do is I just multiply the, the bid times the quantity divided by the, the, the competition, and then that gives me a good idea of, of kind of a, a rank order. So I'll just kind of paste this through here. Um, uh, and um, I can then sort by the, by the rank order. So uh, sort by um, ranking order from largest to smallest. And this will give me a better idea of, of what um, uh, what kind of keywords I should be trying to, to, to bid on. So like if you if you were, or not bid on, but to, to rank on. Uh, so like for example, PPC, let's just pull up an, uh, another window here. Like, remember I was saying like the whole point is to dominate, like, I, like literally, I just went down the list. Okay, I went down the list and wrote content for every single thing. What is PPC? Like fortune.com slash PPC. Like, um, you know, internet marketing, uh, you know, search engine marketing. Like, you just you just generate content, like one theme content for each niche. Here, here I am, uh, search engine marketing, uh, you know, look, it's themed, one one for every niche. And, and, and just, you know, how long did this take? Let's see, um, I've been at it for, for about five years now. I've been blogging about three blogs per week mm -hmm. over a period of five, five, uh, five um, years. And this generates now half a million uh, visits per month uh, from SEO. It's not bad, uh, you, you know, but, but it was just, just the consistency over time. And, and, and also having a plan of action, like how I uh, have the list and, and, and able to know, like sometimes it's really hard to know what what you should be blogging about next, you know? But but I, I tackled it so that I'm attacking like in, in, in the in the order of my plan, and then just trying to dominate the whole thing. Uh, sure, question back there. Yeah, I, I, this is the thing that's always got me about blogging. I'm assuming that for some of these keywords, you don't you haven't created just one blog post over the past five years. You've created a number of different blog posts that are targeting those keywords. How in Christmas do you come up with enough uh, uniqueness on something, uh, especially if it's not a broad term, how do you come up with enough unique stuff over five years to write about? Enough to make it unique <coughs> and different. Well, it's just, it has to do with the, the niches will reveal everything. Like this is, like the, the when you look at a niche and you look at the sub keywords within that niche, you can really get a good sense for what the intent of that search was. You're, you're trying to get into the head of the person executing that search and trying to provide content that answers whatever you think it was they were looking for. And so, you know, what, as I look at the texture of a niche, I'll, uh, there's always a primary keyword and then there's like supporting keywords. I can, to I can totally get into the head of the person making that search and, and, and try to uh, like really provide a, the best possible answer for what I, uh, what I think they're, they're looking for. And everyone's looking for something slightly different. And so, uh, you know, just it has to do with just matching, you know, your content with, with intent. And, and there's lots of different searches. Uh, so let's just move on. Um, the, the point here was, um, so we, we, we talked about keyword niches, the theory of it. 
Uh, I gave two examples of, of how to do it using um, using uh, the Google tools. Uh, I gave you an example of how to, to use the keyword data to prioritize your plan. Um, I want to just point out um, that there, there are other um, other free tools that, that, that you can do this uh, here. This is a uh, this is like WordStream's keyword niche finder, and and uh, just like <coughs> this is free. Like you don't have to pay for this. This is free. You can just go to WordStream.com and, and search. For, you can just search for keyword niche finder, and this thing will show up. Uh, and and, and uh, it's like you, you search for like ski jackets. Okay, it's it's a uh, it's very similar where you just um, uh, you know, type kind of a primary topic, and it'll expose the, um, the subtopics for you the, in terms of the, um, uh, the faceted, like, you know, women's ski jackets or men's ski jackets or children's ski jackets. So that is if this thing turns. Um, yeah, here it is. So, yeah, um, you know, men's ski jackets, women's ski jackets, and you can, you can explore within topics. So, like, this is a lot of, uh, you know, 126 keywords having to do with women's ski jackets. Remember what I was saying about the intent being too broad? You could, you should, if, if, you, if you're seeing 126 different keywords within a niche, maybe you should be a little bit more specific, and rather than just going after women's ski jackets, you should, um, uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can be a little bit more specific, and, and you can see, like, now there's facets of, of women's ski jackets. So it's, it's broken that down into sub-sub-niches. Uh, so, like, uh, North Face uh, women's ski jackets, or women's ski jackets size. Or, so this would be like a pretty nice taxonomy for an e-commerce store, like, if you, like faceted search, like, uh, you know, if you think about how, like, Amazon is laid out, you know, like, if you're, if you're in the TV section, you know, it'll say, like, plasma, LCD, uh, LED, and then by brand, and by size. Like, like what this is doing is it's, it's kind of really exposing all the different facets, and each one of those should be a piece of content on that programmatically generated e-commerce shop. Uh, so, so, um, so that's the niche finder. The grouper, again, a free tool. You can just go to wordstream.com. S -s similar uh, thing um, where you take the, the list of data here and, and, and you just paste it into the grouper here. Uh, and uh, the grouper, oh, right here, reset. Uh, you just paste them all in there. Get the profitable groupings. And um, it's kind of, I, I think it actually does a better job of segmenting the lists than, than, than the AdWords planner, but uh, you can see how it's kind of broken it down into like ads or advertising or, you know, P, uh, PPC. Like, uh, so this is uh, how you would go about doing that kind of organization. Um, all right, so uh, moving on here. Uh, so um, wanted to show you how I deal with the, the new kind of twist that Google's thrown at us in terms of keyword not provided. So um, the, the good news here is that having a, a taxonomy and an organized plan of attack here greatly uh, makes it possible to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, simplify the, the reporting. So I'll show you this in my, my analytics account here. Um, um, it's right here. So under... Um, under the, I think it's called behavior landing pages. Um, what you can see here is that my content is, is all very themed to begin with. So like, like I, this is my content. It's like there's literally like pages called cost per action or you know how to use AdWords or or you know YouTube advertising or you know AdWords extensions, cheat sheets, dynamic keyword insertion, pay per click. Like this, this is the content that I've created over the last five years. The, the point is that this is all um, this is all very theme, and so now if I need to do reporting uh, from, given that there is no keyword data in, in, in Google Analytics anymore, this is for, for people who are really like, this is like a, it's a, quite a problem. Like there's no, you can't get data on how how people found your site, but you can still get data of how they, what page they they, they originated at first. Like where did they, what was the entry page, uh, and so. If you then change the, the segmentation here from all visits, you just get rid of that, and, and instead search for um, non-paid uh, non search traffic, so uh, organic search, uh, and then click apply, um, what, what you can see is um, basically all the SEO traffic that went to the specific pages on my site. So like uh, social media marketing or whatever. Like yes, we rank on social media marketing, it's ridiculous. Uh, the, the, <laughs> You can now drill into this thing, 
and uh, you can um, see kind of like by month how this page is doing. So it's 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 a uh, another way of doing kind of here, let's oh, sorry not by week not by week I might say um, uh, there so, so it seems to be trending nicely so. Last week, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was 1,000, then it's 1,100 searches, then 1,400 searches, you know, and this week it's 1,600 searches. So th this uh, is a different way. It's, again, you can't get keyword tracking at the, the, the organic keyword level, but you can at the group level. Like, all of the keywords that have something to do with social media marketing, all in aggregate, that we're all pushing to this page. Remember, like, each page casts a wide net in terms of, like, you know, hundreds of different search queries. Uh, I can measure an aggregate how well this is doing. So that has to do with the, the landing page report, and then you apply a uh, organic search segmentation on, on, on the filter, and that, that gives you, you know, pretty much uh, some of the data that, that was, was helpful before. Uh, it, not, not all the use cases are, are still supported, but this is at least one, one of them. So that's all I had today, guys. I, I know the time is short here. Uh, thanks. Uh, I, I just wanted to add, um, we're giving away $25,000. Uh, this is like commercial here, I have to pay the bills. Uh, we're, giving, we're giving away $25,000 of, of, of uh, paid search spend. It's a contest. I have some materials here, if, if, if anyone's interested. It's a lot of money, and, and only about 250 people have entered this contest. <laughs> so, so we actually have a very, very good chance of winning this thing. Um, uh, a, a, you know, like way better than like a lottery ticket or something. And, and what it is is you grade your AdWords account, and, and we'll give it away. We'll, we'll give you um, this. Um, you know, the, whoever has the most improved account over the next <coughs> 30 days gets a $25,000. Um, so, so thanks, guys. Uh, that, that concludes my presentation. Um, in terms of the, the, the initial question of like, what are you looking for uh, and stuff, we're hiring. Where if you know any paid search strategists or or, or organic search experts, uh, we definitely hire. So thanks, guys. Any questions? Hey, Larry, a quick question. All those blogs you did, three a week for so many years. Where did you put them? On your customers' websites or on your own? I, I put them on my own website. Okay, so there's a separate blog on your website with all that information? Uh, so this is like, um, uh, let me see if I can, um, like this is, this is a piece of content that's designed to, to rank on Twitter ads. This, this, you know, um, like here, here, here's a here, each each article is, is, is written intentionally with, with some target theme in mind. You can by looking at the blog post, you can kind of figure it out. Um, so so we put them on the blog. Related questions: Did you do any syndication? Yes. Any that? How big part of your strategies? Okay, so. Uh, another part of this, so we're talking about keyword research today. Uh, an, another part of this equation is the links to your site, and, and we didn't talk about it because it's like a, it's a huge, a huge. Uh, uh, you know, you can talk for another session, basically. Uh, yeah, but, we, we can keep but the, 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 the point is just, um, in addition to the blogging, I have this other kind of 50% of my effort that spent acquiring links by by doing guest blogging, like a, I think. Uh, introduced me the things that I can do a lot of guest blogging. That, that's uh, to get you know a good amount of you know traction of the links to your site and, and this kind of stuff. We do um, we do publicity stunts like um, uh, like I wrote this blog here. Um, can I just show you this one here? Uh, it was last week. Uh, uh, do Twitter ads work? Perform you know comparing the performance of the world's largest social network. So I, I just wrote a dumb blog post comparing like Twitter versus Facebook. Why? Because last week uh, Twitter was going public and so yeah. this was a, a really big deal, right? And so um, <clears throat> what happened was, this, this is a ridiculous story, um, I, I, I put the blog on a, on a guest post here on, on um, Business Insider. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I put it as a guest post on, on um, Business Insider blog, see, or, or whatever. This is not the one, but the point is, it, it, it went there, and then, um, and then, it, then it got, got went viral. So like Fox News business, the Fox Business Channel called. So it was like uh, they wanted to know, uh, uh, they wanted to know like why, 
here, here. Fox Business News. Um, yeah, so you can see like it got a lot of um, pickup, and they all have links back to the to the blog post. And so um, I even got on TV like like last Wednesday you know, talking with the, the anchors of, of, of uh, Fox Business about you know how Twitter ads work uh, and then why why they're not effective. So so there, there's a keyword research component, and then there's this other kind of side component where you're you're doing these publicity stunts to get links to your site, and um, you know that's a different. Do, do Twitter ads work? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so I had to pick something that was contrary to public opinion. So the things that get picked up by media are, there has to be a so what. Uh, and so if you're just saying that, if everyone's excited about Twitter, and if you're saying that I'm also excited about Twitter, then you're not going to get any play. So you have to pick the kind of the opposite conventionalism uh, kind of positions. And if you can back it up with data, then that's even better. A uh, question in the back there? Yeah, um, first of all, I'll answer yes, they do work, depending on the industry that we've seen. Um, how much do you use, by the way, Avisa Gabber, I hope I'm saying her name right, just a great blog post, love her, you should give her a um, uh, How much do you use social media for sourcing? Um, it's something we've done to her for, uh, uh, for keyword research uh, to find out the sourcing. Oh, geez. Um, so, not as much as we should. Uh, you know, when I'm doing the keyword research, I'm sticking to like this evergreen plan. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, I, I made a plan like many years ago, and I'm just knocking off, you know, the the, the, the pages one by one going through that plan. But the, the social media is great for trending topics and stuff like like stuff that didn't exist before when I when I didn't wouldn't have that plan. And um, but I. I I don't use tools for that. That's not just like ESP. So like, I, I wrote I wrote a pl blog post about the keyword planner, knowing that this is going to replace the keyword pl the, the Google keyword tool. So that uh, generated a lot of like traffic. You, you see what I mean? So that, I just I just knew that that would, would be a big keyword going forward. I didn't use any um, corroborating social media data to prove that. Uh, it was kind of instinct. Would you be interested in chatting about it? Yeah. Um, we do it all the time. Just uh, wondering how much you use it. Um, finding out what people are talking about. You mentioned uh, this is like a game. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any of you guys had to sit through philosophy um, Wittgenstein with language games for um, for the theory of, of uh, language. Um, it, it plays quite a bit into SEO. So thinking about the difference between what you think about and then what you type um, is a key to getting people to your website. That's what we found. Uh, here, so analyzing how people refer to your products um, by, say, downloading all your tweets for a year, providing you have a lot of conversation, has led us to, um, I know one time it was like 65% increase in keyword rankings when we just downloaded their Twitter um, for a year. I know another company called Tiny Prints did something like that. They saw a 47% increase in all their keyword rankings by just looking at the chatter, taking keyword combinations in a spreadsheet, and making that their content calendar and uh, they've, they've seen enormous success. Uh, it's, it's really great stuff. Uh, we, use, um, we use breaking news mm -hmm. for link building. So like chasing after stories, and we use um, the, the for, for, for keyword ditches, we use uh, the evergreens, like stuff that's mm -hmm. like, you know, how to use AdWords, like stuff that's never gonna change. Uh, you know, there is. Um, so this is, this is just me on, on uh, <laughs> there I am. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Who's the sound? Anyways, uh, any other questions? Are we doing for time, Brian? We've been for a while, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Where is the data for the WordStream tool derived from? Oh, great. So the, the WordStream tools uh, use, uh, and, and this is all free, by the way, so you don't have to like, just try it for free. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we we uh, have a trillion keyword database, and um, uh, most of it it's actually um, it's just it's pretty static. Like most of the keywords are at this point. Like cause once you have a trillion, you add like 20 million a day. You know, it's it's still pretty static. Um, you, so where where do we where did we get that from? Uh, we, we we used to license it from um, Net Zero, like or. Uh, I said that, but ISPs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we would just buy search referrer data. Uh, now, this is uh, it's not not as effective as before because you know 
they don't have the they don't have the organic search query data anymore. They only have the, the paid search data. Uh, so uh, you know, in addition to that, we, we augment it using data from Google Trends and, and other kind of um, uh, third parties. So the questions keep quicker here. Yeah, I had a real quick question. Um, when you have guest bloggers on your blog, how do you write a little bit? Do you keep them on, how do you keep them on uh, your theme? Because, uh, or do you just let them write as they will? Okay, so the the guest bloggers don't know anything about my, my SEO plan. Okay. Like they're just um, like I have a plan that myself and two others are executing on. Uh, and then the guest blog is, is just extra. Similarly, like when I contribute to like an ink magazine or something like this, they're not communicating to me like, you know, here's a keyword theme for you to, to, to tackle. Uh, it's just, not everything that you do in, in, in blogging has to be keyword optimized. It's, it's like, but at least half of it should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, um, we as a company haven't found any luck um, finding any reliability with like the <coughs> keyword planner um, average monthly searches. We found that it's, it seems a little bit unreliable and you see like average 10 for like a million, like it'll be the same. Um, we'll help you sell the average monthly searches as far as those. It seems reliable. You know, um, there's, there's a couple other ways you can run. So first of all, it's all directional. It's not, it's not reliable. <laughs> of course, um, it's... Uh, the, there's a couple other indicators you can look at. Uh, length of the keyword, so there's like a pretty, like a drop off in terms of the probability of that keyword being s searched on based on the number of characters and also the number of tokens. So like, what I do is I take the, the stupid estimates from Google and then I run it through a, a kind of a second pass uh, where, I, where I look at like the um, keyword length and, and other stuff to, to, to try to, like you'll have two, like you said, you'll have two keywords that have the same estimate, but one of them is like, you know, how to do PPC marketing, and then the other one is like PPC marketing how to. Or like the one, the one that's smaller will have more. So I'll kind of adjust, and fix the estimates uh, based on the initial estimates. Can, can you compare uh, those paid keyword tools versus your free one? Oh, I can't say anything bad about the, like a, a competitor product. It's not my style. <coughs> the, 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 the whole thing about um, so like. The ones that I really, really love are um, SEM Rush. Uh, like this is like that, it's just sick. It's, they have, it's so great. Uh, same with uh, Spy Food. Uh, like sick has been awesome. Uh, <laughs> SEM Rush is great. Spy Food. Uh, another one that I use a lot is um, the Moz difficulty tool from from, from um, SEO Moz or Moz now. Um, those are like the three that I that I'm. I don't use it every day, but I'll use it like once a week. How is this one from Australia called Word Tracker or something? Uh, Word Tracker? Yeah, yeah. Word Tracker's, uh, they're, they're, um, they're in, um, we get confused with being Word Tracker a lot. Uh, the, the, they're great too. Uh, they're, they're actually, like, I think they're like the, the oldest, one, yeah, yeah. the most senior. Like, if you read any how to SEO tutorial, like, they're always mentioned because they're, they're, they've just been around for like 20 years. So that, that's a great one. <laughs> it seems image is big on your blog posts. When did you go to that and how did that impact your traffic? Image searches? But images the, in the blog. Your image is there? Yes. So, so I, I, I put a lot of image. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of images. Uh, like, I put in like five, six images per blog post, figures. Um, I use my niches, my keyword niche data, to theme the title of those file names, right? I use the, the, the data in my niche to know what heading, uh, the alt tag to put in there. Now, I, I use the, the data in my niche, you know, like, it's, it's images are, is a big part of it. Uh, and, and, you know, because each niche has multiple keywords, I put in four or five of them. Almost like the Yoast tool? Where it, Tells you what you should include in the post. Um, uh, I, that's more like a mechanical reminder of, of doing it. Like what we're talking about here is just like the strategy at a high level in terms of like you, you don't need Yoast to do that. Uh, but uh, you, yeah, I guess so. Yoast is great. Uh, our next person is from the guy who does uh, 3D printers for furnaces. Works there. <laughs> so I, you mentioned that you know your blog post should really be long enough for every content. For a lot of what you're trying to do, do you ever go back and update them, or it's sort of like 
one off, if they're well written, you let them sit out there? Um, so we spend, um, it's an ongoing effort. Uh, so we update um, evergreen stuff at a much slower rate. So it's, it's, it's almost like, um, um, I mean, what, if, if, if one for every 20 new posts is an update, so it's, it's, it's still being updated, but at a much slower rate. Uh, just one other thing is, um, sometimes what we'll do is rather than update an old post, we'll just rewrite the post, okay? We'll rewrite a new post, uh, and then for the 301, the old post, to the new post, like rather than having to edit the thing. So that works great because then the new piece of content will, will inherit the old rankings of, of the old page and all those links and stuff. Uh, and and uh, but it'll be updated content, and then and, like sometimes like you want to radically change the angle of the content too. Like you know maybe you were saying like buying links is great, but, like you know two years ago, and now you have to write an article saying why not to buy links. You know it's, it's hard to, to to edit that post because it's like it's a completely different article, so you can just rewrite it and put it on. Do you uh, organize your blog through categories primarily, or do you attach tags to them? How do you typically do it here? Yeah, it's, a, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, it's right here. Uh, the categories are just uh, you know, analytics, SEO, copywriting, entrepreneurship, uh, infographics, that, that kind of stuff. But one, one little interesting thing about this is that you can use the, the blog categories to create uh, remarketing categories. So like, it, it, I can, it, is everyone familiar with remarketing? Like I can, based on like them coming in from an SEO keyword or a PPC keyword, I can then tailor the message based on how they first arrived at the site using the same categories in, in my blog. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Um, same thing? The, just as a follow up to that, are you trying to rank Categories specifically, do you often find like for each one of those categories, do you find that your ranking is the category instead of the post? Uh, not really. That's no. like very thin. So like our category pages are just a listing of maybe for 40 or 50 pieces of content. And like that's almost like a it's almost like a doorway page. Like a doorway meaning like it doesn't have content in of itself, but it leads to uh, doors to other content. And what we're seeing is that, like that kind of content doesn't rank nearly as well as it used to. Um, so uh, I think a lot of the stuff you, you so, I mean, all the stuff you said was great. Um, but I've noticed it's, it really is talking about the SERPs, like just getting ranked in the SERP. Do you have any sort of advice for having people, as far as keyword research, moving through your website, looking at visitor flow or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah. So we, uh, that's not really my expertise. I'm not able to come. Uh, I have a big topic. You, you have I'm not sure. Yeah. There, there's someone else who deals with conversion rate optimization. Like, I, I'm just like a top of the funnel kind of just get the people to the top, and then someone else figures out how to get them to the right most track. Fair enough. Since you last spoke in four years, you've knocked down 10,000 keywords and you know, half a million searches. So the funnel's built. So. <laughs> there.